all right it's 11 o'clock <clears throat> and we would love to start on time we can wait for um, other uh, people to join in but um, i think we can start with at least introduction of kunal and a few questions you know that i have on my list so welcome kunal um, uh, to another session of uh, start a master class by chandigarh angels network um we are really elated to have you again on this show um as a matter of concern 9 out of 10 startups fail within the first 5 years of starting up these are the global stats so you know the um this this global significance um has a big concern when it comes to so many startups evolving every day and going down to dust almost every day this is what we are here to discuss and i'm sure um, many of uh, the people in the audience today are running their own startups and this session might be very enlightening for them because what we are here to discuss is it is it really the end of the road um if you fail in your startup or there is much beyond it so without uh, wasting uh, much time um i do the introduction of kunal for the benefit of people who have um, joined in for the first time so kunal is a serial entrepreneur uh, runs bunch of startups and he's most popularly known for u trade solutions also sits on the board of chandigarh angels network and um, inspires us a lot uh, and i am vineet khurana i run chandigarh angels network um and so we are in touch with you many of you for a long long time and i wish um at least a few are known to us already um great so let me start um, right away i believe no one hopes to fail no one would really want to fail in whatever endeavors they start and so is the case with these startup founders as well kunal what in your opinion are the most common reasons that the startups fail um so firstly i think it's important to uh understand that failure is also subjective uh i think uh, uh failure in somebody's eye may not be the failure in others eyes so for example uh, uh i think the way we we are defining in broad sense that a failure here is when the company shuts down okay so uh but there are many other things which may happen even if a start shuts down there is tons of learning that goes with the co-founders there is tons of learning that goes with the team which stays with them forever money comes and goes but the learning stay with them forever so frankly uh you know startup failure from some perspective may not be truly a failure from other perspective so failure is a okay uh so that's one thing i want everyone to keep in mind secondly uh, we fail in many places in life we do fail in many places but failures are part of life it's just like you know you have a day then you have night it's like you have a success you will failure it's part and parcel of our life we fail in maybe school exams we fail to realize our dreams we fail to attempt to realize our dreams we fail we comes everyone doesn't come first everyone is not always the biggest and the largest so clearly it's a it's not really that something that we need to keep in mind as a a uh, stigma that if we fail it's a bad thing it's a bad thing you know it's part of our life we all have our own journeys uh it doesn't matter whether i make more money than you or less or you have a bigger startup or a bigger company than mine it's no it beyond a point it, these are just uh if you take it in a very spiritual perspective these are just meaningless numbers which change things so take it in perspective everything is just not about competition it's more about following your journey enjoying your life doing what you want to do and hopefully getting somewhere with that progressing with that even if your startup shut so uh, continues running it should not be a big deal that's the number one thing i want you to take away from this so it's a subjective and uh, failure is part of our lives we fail in many places uh, you know from school from making friends to losing friends to uh you know wanting something that we don't get etc it doesn't stop us it doesn't 
should not discourage us. It's just that, okay, there's something that's meant to be for us or for you. Um, that's another thing I want to put failure in a perspective. Secondly, uh, like Vineet was saying that nine out of 10 or maybe 95, 99% startups do shut down within the first three to five years. Um, that's, uh, uh, that's, that just, these are just the stats which tell a story that many, many more startups do shut down eventually. Uh, frankly, not just startups, the big is shut down too. Kodak uh, was selling the films and photographs to many people, millions of people, but I don't think they exist really in any form right now. Uh, many other companies have before Netflix, Blockbuster had shut down before, uh, uh, you know, so many, so many companies have shut down. It's okay. Even the big companies fail. It's a matter of time. Uh, startup, they, they sort of shut down even before a mark before the first one, two, three, four, five years. So that's what I guess we are focusing on. Not that large companies as the cycles change, as the disruptions happen, as the times and the uh, needs and the human behavior, the markets change. Like we're going to see a major change in this year in the COVID-19 and subsequently the companies that do well, this well will look very different from a year ago. For example, last year, lending companies, lending NBFCs, lending tech platforms raised tons of money of them are struggling now and most likely most of them would shut down within this year so you know the themes and the flavors change okay um so these are just some perspectives on the uh, shutdowns or why they may happen now the core reasons why startups do not survive three to five years uh, could be many but i'll try to list top three to five uh, here for you uh, number one reason is that you run out of money uh, you need money running a startup or to keep running even a company. Um, if you run out of money, you shut down. As simple as that. Your, your bills, you can't pay your bills. You cannot pay your employees. You cannot pay your team members. You cannot pay anyone. People leave okay? and the company ends. So that's the number one reason you run out of funds. Why do you run out of funds? Maybe you never had a business model in the first place. Maybe you were not making revenues versus what you were spending. Maybe you were looking to raise money, which you could not raise variety of reasons, but number one reasons companies shut down, including startups, mainly uh, that uh, you run out of money. Cash is king. Cash is what makes a company going. Uh, second reason could be that you never had a product market fit in the sense that sometimes we believe, I believe that I want this thing. Everyone should want it. That's a very um, delusional thinking because what I want may not be what any of you want. Um, so we need to keep in mind that sometimes we are creating products for which there is no market or there may never be a market. Or sometimes we are creating products which are not fit to the market at the price point where we are trying. Everything in life makes sense at a price point. You cannot have an iPhone for 10 lakh rupees. It will not work. You cannot have a, you know, an Android phone for 2 lakh rupees. It may not work. So you need to really product price market fit is the most important thing one very crucial factor uh, where if you do not uh, position it correctly you do not evaluate the fit and adapt the fit as you go along in the startup appropriately it's likely that your business would end because you would not be able to sell it at the cost plus profit you want to make okay so product market fit is another reason a uh, third is the business model business model is that you are making something at x you are adding y as margin you're selling at z price um, but the business model doesn't work because client has always got a bet best next alternative every client has a next best alternative if they don't take your product at your price they always have a second choice most of the times so if their next choice is cheaper better reasonably good and what you're offering was just a little bit improvement which doesn't make any difference to them you will not you will not survive your business model will not work or if your business model is such that you will be able to charge the margins by when you are selling millions of X, millions of products at a very large scale, means that for a number of years until you get to that sales numbers, you will not make money. So that's also not a great business model. Uh, Flipkart, ATM are classic examples, and they clearly suffered for that. Uh, uh, so I think uh, that's the second, re third reason, the business model. Uh, Fourth reason sometimes comes that team is, teams have issues. So co-founders fight, there is board members who fight, or your team members just leave, or you are, treat, you are something is right in the team. 
team is very crucial in making any any startup survive and succeed uh, if the team doesn't get along uh, there are integrity issues there are personal issues there are vision issues there are tons of issues and you know in times things change times change people change so frankly if you are not able to bring everyone together with the change you will sooner or team issues in which some people leave and then that leads to many times shut down of the businesses um that's the fourth reason i think and the last reason probably i want to focus on or talk about is lose of focus so you know as an entrepreneur the double edged sword that we have we can prove anything we can say that okay uh, because we see an opportunity in covid 19 every market will grow after this from next year or we can say that because this is so depressing it will get only worse you know i can face say you start your startup you have focus on something and you, it's very hard to give up on the side which come as distractions many times distractions like probably adapted and pivoted for the right reasons um let's say take another example then snapdeal is now moving into some other things like they're moving into online digital content i don't know if you saw this they are put, putting on videos on their platform is it a distraction or is it a uh, is it a pivot who knows but reality is that many times when you'll be doing a startup you look at some low hanging fruit some opportunities and you will have a very limited resources number of team members money and if you get too too diversified or too distracted with doing many things at the same time you will lose out you will lose out the focus why you had started the company you do lose out that you were meant to do one thing only and one thing very well and you will be doing five things and all of them will not work because your efforts are now really reduced in all of them so frankly for this reason lose of focus uh it this doesn't work this uh, start these startups many startups do fail uh so it's very hard for you to say i think as investors also we look at startups and say you should do one thing and same thing very well if you fail in that we are okay but do not try to do three things as average in with average effort do one thing but do it exceptionally well um so these are some of the reasons i think i can talk about why startups or many startups fail uh i think there are other some discussions which we would take on as the next question comes sure sure that was very elaborate thank you very much kunal um can you share um, an example of any startup that seemed a sure success until it went down to dust uh many i am just trying to think so there was a there are two three examples i like to give here uh, just trying to relate with you which ones you might have heard of so in 1996 or 7 um there was a company which uh, was called startup.com they were essentially in us they were uh, doing all the government proceedings online so they were saying to the government that you do paperwork today for filing of your uh, chalans or traffic or other regulatory issues etc we'll do it all online for you and your clients and your citizens can interface with you directly um so there was a startup uh, called startup.com which is actually a recorded documentary you can choose to watch it they raised hundreds of millions of dollars they had a billion dollar valuation in 97 or 98 within one or two years of starting and bill clinton who was the president of united states at the time was talking to their ceo and talking about how uh, he and uh, bill bill and that guy are gonna make the country a great digital tech nation in the future and uh, they are like shown on the documentary as well and uh, a year later 1999 or 2000 the company went to zero so within 3 to 4 years startup.com feel free to google this up went from 0 to a billion dollar or multi billion dollars the guy was on the cover of time magazine back to zero that was one example which actually is the most dramatic one i can think of uh there's another one recently that has shut down it's a startup based out of us it's called motif m o t i f it essentially is a a uh, robo advisory for financial services means that if you want to let's say save some money and invest into something today you get investment advisors who tell you okay put your money into equities or mutual funds or etfs or something uh, and put it in this ratio based on your risk appetite motive was trying to do the same thing in us 
uh, out of us globally for um, using technology behind but no advisors no physical uh, physically no they would hire no people and actually there there were investment advisors who were using their platform to actually d- come up with a good back tested investment advice results motive had raised 125 million dollars goldman sachs was and their investor goldman sachs was running and offering funds and their products to their clients but last week only motive said we are shutting down because of covid and other things we are unable to scale it the model is not working we're not going to be able to raise money in the next one two years and if we are not able to raise then we won't be able to survive we might as well shut down they shut down just last week motif m o t i f feel free to look it up uh, interesting story went really up was quite hyped then uh, obviously uh, as usual many startups have their high valuations before they derive the value to that point you know many times it happens that there is a valuation of a company and there is a value value and valuation are generally not the same because the value is is what the real value is and valuation is what the market perceives to be their value so generally they tend to have higher valuations in the boom periods and they tend to have lower valuations in the in the uh, bear periods bear markets so um, you know anyway so motive shut down another example could be snapdeal in 2016 uh snapdeal was valued at i think 6.5 billion dollars they had just raised a 1.5 billion dollars round from uh from softbank and flipkart around the time was valued lower was around 5 to 6 billion dollars that was 2016 snapdeal has not been able to raise a single penny since they have been forced to actually become very very small they may have some money left which they had raised in 4 years ago uh, and based on that they are running they can they break even yes but how much revenue uh, revenue would they be doing very very small compared to the peak times peak times they were targeting like a billion dollar revenue or gmv uh, gross merchandise value a month or so uh, but now i'm sure they are down to few tens of millions at best and there there is not enough profit for them to s- sustain it itself so clearly the business model in the absence of uh, high uh, valuation funding Uh, from big investors they cannot run that business so e-commerce is unfortunately one of those where you need lots of funding or it doesn't work so um, so clearly they have shrunk quite a bit they're not shut down and they're trying to survive and pivot and adapt and everything but they'll never they'll not easily get back to any billion dollar valuation it's just too hard um so that was a that's the another example i can give you i hope you can relate with some of them and some of the cases that happened so snapdeal was pretty much because of the investor driven story and issue uh i think uh, startup.com was just a timing and they were riding a wave of higher valuations when the value was not there uh motive was a reasonable business model i think but just a tough times like these in these times it's very hard to survive and they could not raise any money so they shut down great um very elaborate again kunal uh, now um how do you know as an entrepreneur that you failed um and how far can you keep running until you shut down so very very important question um i think uh, thanks for asking um i think uh, uh it's a very very hard thing to do as an entrepreneur because it's again a, a double edged sword you can prove that your business is doing well or you can and the opportunity is great or you can prove that it's not going to work but when you are in it imagine you have run a startup for 1 2 3 4 years it worked pretty okay or you have survived and you have raised some money or you have in- built a business model which might be a small business in the initial years um and suddenly you realize that it's not going anywhere you know you can keep running it let's say you are making you have let's say x employees so i'm making numbers up let's say you have 10 people with you and you are making revenue of 100 and your cost is close to 90 so you are making 10 as profit let's say in 3 4 years time but that 10 that you're making is is your let's say salary or your profit or whatever uh and that 10 is lower than what you yourself alone as an entrepreneur can get as a salary job or somewhere else in the market imagine that you are just pretty much running it along which many startups are they are they ought to be like cockroaches which just don't die they just survive 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 but at some point you realize that if you keep doing it for five you've done you've given it five years or three years and now you've gone to a point where it's reached 100 but you're not your 100 is not going to go to 200 or 500 or 1000 the 100 is going to go to 110 120 130 
correspondingly your expenses will go from 90 to 100 to 110 so essentially your profitability is still only 10 20 30 now you're not really making a massive business uh, you're not going to dramatically grow and remember the biggest thing is not return on investment the biggest thing is return on time investments you can still raise again but your time that you're wasting in your youth or spending in it on your youth or whatever age you are 20 30 40 50 that time you're never going to get back for in your life right so if you're not able to scale i think you need to start evaluating how big the market truly is if you can adapt and grow somehow dramatically but if year on year every year you come to the point that actually it's not growing because of xyz reasons and overall there is no major growth in your market because your market is not growing or rather shrinking i think you should look at not just the investment you've put but also the time that you are you will have to keep putting to keep it going at that stage what becomes important is either you are loving your job what do you do is your passion you love it continue doing it persevere survive even if you have to break even and not make money do it but if you're not loving it it was just a startup idea you had and now it's been three years or five years and you're not able to scale any further i think it's time to shut down it is time to shut down and the thing you need to think about is your time your your time in life because let's say you put 20 to 25 years into doing it or 30 to 35 years these years are not going to come back and you don't have endless energy and capacity to keep running the startups and building one after another the startup you build let's say when you were 30 uh, and you ran it for up to 35 you're not going to be able to make another startup with the same energy and same risk taking appetite from 35 to 40 or 40 to 45 sooner or later you would want some comfort zone to kick in your energy and fire in the belly would start dying down so it's very important to evaluate return on your time is it worth your time if you're loving it no question if it was just a business idea and you think you can do many other things and this is not scaling time to shut it down don't be a cockroach in that sense just end it move forward there are many other things which can follow so that's i think some of these are some of the thoughts you can have while you're trying to make your company survive uh or scale that this is time to shut down it's very hard as an entrepreneur to know when to shut down you do need intervention you do need some mentors or guidance from others who can listen to you understand your point and then help come give you a logical sort of input that okay this is time to shut it down so uh these are some of the thoughts i would share great great very strong statement and very valuable advice kunal um now um is failure the end of journey um and any example of founders who first failed but then went on to make it big if you could share with us so failure is definitely not the end of the journey um take an example you didn't make it to iit you went to pec you did not make it to pec you went to jatkara we all get in engineering degrees or if you didn't become a ca you became a cfa or you became something else so Failure is never the end of the journey, okay? Anywhere in life, startup is no different. It's the same. You don't get this school, you get another school. You don't get this person as your spouse, you get another one, okay? So frankly, um, it's not that the failure ends everything. So startup failure is not the end of the road, not the end of the journey. Hopefully, if you look at it positively and in a perspective, uh, and this is how probably Einstein put it as well. He said that, um, I found a thousand ways how the light bulb would not function before finding the one it would. Right. So, uh, you know, failure just le is progress in my mind. Failure is progress. You learned from it. You had a tremendous journey. You had a great enriching experience. You learned way more than any other business school would ever teach you. You save your MBA, class, MBA cost if you were otherwise going to do an MBA. Uh, hopefully you didn't do an MBA beforehand. Uh, otherwise, you've clearly wasted money. Uh, sorry to say that. But coming back, I think uh, important point is that failure is not the end of the journey. Many startup founders, uh, they do not succeed in their first attempt. They, they barely do. Very rarely are these the founders who have, who have succeeded in the first time. So Paytm, for example, Paytm was not Vijay Shekhar's first company. Okay, I'm not saying the earlier one was a failure either. He was doing some 197 services, uh, mobile VAS services business before. But what became big was his second product, Steve Jobs, uh, Apple, Apple was not successful in the previous decades of 70s and 80s. He was, he was fired from the company. He, he could not make a product market fit at the price point. At the time, $10,000 laptop or, or sorry, Macintosh in 
or ten thousand dollars Macintosh back in nineteen eighty did not make sense. Nobody had that kind of money. But in nineteen ninety five, when he came back, or nineteen ninety six, whenever it was, then he came up with products which were better priced as per the purchase parity of people and built some fantastic products. And then he built the best products ever. So you know, Steve Jobs, Apple one point oh never succeeded. You know, after him, even it went further down, and he had to come back to make it survive. So uh, you know, Apple was not successful initially. So there are many, many stories where entrepreneurs have failed once, twice, many times. Actually, in Silicon Valley, also in the investor circle in India, I think it's actually preferred that they invest in your second startup, not in the first one, because from the first one you learn the basic rules of the game. You've understood much better what things may not work, and you're more likely to succeed in your second or third venture. So, startup failure is not the end of the road. It's a journey. It's a learning. Take it with you, and uh, very likely, um, you know, it leads to something else. Whether even if it's another startup or it's another job or it's another pivot or it's something else, you definitely come out as much more mature and a person with a great perspective. Excellent, excellent, Kunal. Now, uh, what are the clear signals that a startup is not going to survive? So, I think clear signals are. losses years after years are the clearest signals or daily fights among the co-founders or the team members uh i think uh, clients not buying or paying for your product you keep building but client says okay it's not good enough for me it's not good enough for me yet so no product is real until a client pays for it okay it may be useful to you but if if a client doesn't pay for it then means it means that it's got no not enough value for the client means you don't have a business until your client pays you for a product or a service it's not worth much okay just in the idea stage or at the uh, initial poc stage if nobody's paying for it it's not worth much uh, the moment you have clients paying for your product and you are able to make a business model where you know xyz falls in x cost y profit z z revenue then you are in business but i think the clear signs are lack of money running out of money every year borrowing it from friends family or trying to raise from investors when you are able when you are unable to uh, make your business work classic example if you have seen the silicon valley tv series the on hotstar uh there there is a company called huli in it where uh, he has no business model and he just keeps building products and keeps fooling his investors that we will do this next year we'll do that next year and some bullshit stories but um you know uh so there are things like that where uh, clearly if the revenues and profitability is not falling in place year after year that's a clearest signal that it's not going to work excellent and um, you know one of the questions which um which comes to my mind and uh, obviously many others have asked it is failure really inevitable and uh, how can the entrepreneurs decrease their odds of failure so uh, look there are failures and there are failures okay there are small failures and there are big failures small failures are that you could not make let's say your target you could not achieve your targets your target was to get 100 but you got only 80 or 50 it's a failure that you've not succeeded in your goal but it may be still good enough for you and your investors and your team that you're still growing and reasonably well okay so depends on the failures uh, i think uh, there are different kinds of failures and you will definitely face some failures i mean it's not that if you think that walmart and goldman sachs and flipkarts and all the big companies or even reliance from that matter they all succeed all the time they don't they take many bets and many of them do fail uh but i think they have to make sure that they the ones in which they fail at they learn from it quickly they minimize their losses and they move forward with the learnings and uh go on to go on with their winning bets so frankly um uh failures are always there they are uh, but failing the way you are saying it is probably you are alluding to failure meaning shutting down so is that inevitable frankly who am i to say jeff bezos from amazon said all companies fail some day or the other our job is to just delay it as far as we can he is the richest man on the planet he has the most one of the most valuable companies on the planet and he's saying that he will also he believe amazon would shut down one day now the question is does it shut down in 10 years or 20 or 50 that's a question but it will eventually shut down businesses times change businesses become arrogant and they do shut down so uh, failures do come some are big some are small try to minimize the big ones and uh, get good learnings from them and try to have only the smaller ones 
try to make good winnings against the failures too. So, you know, you have other bets where you might be winning. So that's what you can do as an entrepreneur. And uh, how to avoid failure, I think uh, the only thing is just to be very smart on your toes, very honest to yourself. Uh, have right bunch of uh, mentors or advisors who can help you look in the mirror and say when you are succeeding versus when you are failing. Because as I said, it's very subjective. Because you are too much into it, you may get emotional and stop uh, taking failure as a failure, right? Like Donald Trump, he doesn't think anything is a failure for him. He's always successful, um, which is a joke if you watch him these days. So, um, you know, so I think uh, the way you can delay it or defer it is just by making the right decisions, engaging right group of people to make decisions, trusting everyone's opinion, have a diverse group of people. You should not always go with what you think is right, but if majority of your uh, inner circle people feel you are doing what you're doing is right, then you should do it. And many times it might mean that you have people who say no to you and you follow it. Even if you are the entrepreneur or the CEO, you say, okay, fine. Others are not believing in what I'm saying. We'll not do it unless you have a very strong conviction to still take those decisions. And also benchmark very well, track very well the outcomes of your success, define them very well up front so that there is least ambiguity later that for whether you have succeeded or not. And then based on that, from the, from the uh, do introspection, uh, once something has happened, do some root cause analysis, what happened, why, how. And uh, based on that, learn from it and move forward. You failed, you failed, acknowledge it. You know, it's no harm acknowledging. Failure is not a problem, but will, uh, your willingness not to see it or you're failing, you, if you fail to see it and if you fail to learn from it, that's a bigger problem. Great. Um, and now I'll follow on to what you just said, learn from it and move on. I think failure without learning is not worth it. Now, what learnings can the startup failures lead you to? So learnings are tremendous. Learnings from startup failures, I think, assuming we are again talking about specifically you shut down a startup and what can it lead to? So uh, I think uh, it just leads to the following that you picked a business, you picked an idea, you picked a product, you picked the team, you raised, uh, you had X money, which did not work. It's not, again, it may be uh, actually glorified as just an experience, you know, which you had. That's it. It becomes an enriching experience you know way more about your business, your stream, and maybe you know way more about why things may not work in your case, what the execution challenges were, etc. Typically, failures can lead to either you follow on and you do something else where you are more convinced if you still have fire in the belly. So you pivot into something else or you start something else which is new, uh, one. Or you uh, actually, your even while your company may not have succeeded by itself, but you're able to find it home. You know, you can you get equity hired, by another startup or another large, better, bigger company. Uh, th that way you can have a bigger journey with someone else who is actually uh, better funded or has more money than you did or your company did. Or thirdly, you go back to a job with a great perspective and much more experience to share. I think success is a lousy teacher. Failure teaches you a hell lot. Yeah. So clearly failing is not a bad thing. Your learning is tremendous. That stays with you for your life. Success doesn't teach you enough. So frankly, I can give you this in writing almost that all the startup entrepreneurs who've succeeded the first time, they barely succeed the second time. Why? Because they think they succeeded because they were good. But reality is they might have had some timing on their side, some luck on their side, some investors, some people on their side. Take an example, Sabir Bhatia. Sabir Bhatia developed or invented Hotmail.com, sold it to Microsoft for $300 million. That was back in 97 or so. He's not done a single thing useful till date. Every single investment he's done till date of on his own startup or outside have all failed. Okay. He was just lucky. There's a book by Richard Branson called Screw It, Let's Do It. Okay. It just says that let's be an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter even if you fail, sort of. He talks about one of the concepts which I truly believe in. Your success is dependent upon two things. One is, of course, your skill, effort, timing, etc. Uh, your skill and effort. Uh, second is luck, which you don't control. Many people get lucky. Many people work terribly hard. You don't know at the point in time which one it is. And if you are not a, uh, an entrepreneur with a true and good perspective, you will always feel that you did well. It was nothing to do with the timing. So Hotmail was the first one. It was just a timing. He had the idea before everyone else. He could sell it quickly to Microsoft. Microsoft was keen to buy it, etc. But otherwise, later than that, year two later, 
there are millions of other websites there are millions of other email services none of them made any anything right so clearly hotmail was just more of a luck and timing than actually a hard skill that the entrepreneur had and that reflected in his every single decision he made since sure very well exemplified um, now from the investor's perspective um say you're an investor what would you perceive of a previously failed founder would you really want to back a founder who is who has failed previously or what will be your perception about that founder uh i would i would happily back someone who's failed once i have no problem or twice even or even thrice for me as long as a person brings a reasonable perspective you know one of the questions i would like to ask the entrepreneur is okay you shut down your previous startup no problem what happened i think if i ask this and the person comes across and says that no my co-founder was wrong or my investors were stupid or the my clients were idiots means clearly entrepreneur has learned nothing from it you cannot put everything on others you know somewhere you are also equally responsible versus some entrepreneur coming to me and saying that actually you know what i think i got the timing wrong or i was too arrogant and i put in too much money or i did not realize the value of the product at the price point for the market etc that's way more way more reasonable and sounds more truthful so i think i would only look for have they really learned from it and how convinced and interested they are in making this one work the current one for me failure is not a problem but have you learned from the failure and are you reasonable enough are you grounded and humble enough or are you still arrogant about it that's what i would like to just validate otherwise i have no problem if the person has succeeded or failed before no problem excellent excellent now uh, how open are the investors for uh, their portfolio startups demise what if your portfolio startups fail how will you treat that situation so um actually i'll tell you from investors perspective if we firstly we have to invest in a few dozen companies dozen means at least 10 12 before we can have a reasonable probability of getting a good successful one out of them we do realize that out of 10 we invest in 5 to 7 will fail 2 to 2 to 3 might give us our money back or twice of that or something and one or two might make it 5 to 10 times the return so frankly we are all prepared for it we just want i think as investors especially me i think i just want that people should put in a good honest uh, attempt with full integrity into making the startup work and focus on it do not get distracted by side things unnecessarily and do it well if they fail i have no problem as long as their attempt was honest and they were able to focus on it and do it to the best ability they could but if they fail because they try to play over smart they or try to over become clever over the investor and say you know i'll siphon off the money or i'll do something on my own etc or they were running two things in the background which was their plan b you should never have a plan b in a startup in my view plan a is plan a stick to it you fail you fail you the moment you start making plan b means you are you already are thinking that you will fail and it will lead to your failure anyways so um, i think i only look for an honest attempt with integrity you fail you fail i don't have any problem i do understand all investors do or should understand that majority startups fail and uh, this can happen to your portfolio company as well very enriching uh, now the last one before we jump on to the audience questions um it's like what harm can raising too much funding do to a startup you you've spoken about it very frequently you you keep saying that it is excessive capital what's your reasoning behind it so basically what happens is that um when you um when you raise too much funds you become arrogant you try to overspend you try to overpay for things you believe that you can squeeze time and uh, whatever you think otherwise you would have done in 5 years now you have to do it in 1 year because you have five times the money or and you try to move too fast you accelerate too much and you crash you screw up you diversify you over invest into things which were not meant to be the focus you lose focus you lose sight you uh, do tons of things which you would not do in a normal course of business so i think uh, some of these points le- happen when you have more money L- classic example i don't need to say any more look at softbank they had more money than any other vc in the world they had like what 100 billion plus funds uh, and look at where they are now they are really screwed and by the way let me remind you mayoshi san the co-founder of softbank or ceo he 
was the single largest loser in the 1999 dot com bust as well. So he had backed tons of tech companies in the Internet Valley back in the days, and he was the one who had lost most money than anyone else. So frankly, I think you just overpay for things. You like he did like hundred million dollars for housing dot com kids who just seven kids coming out of a college don't have a plan, just a theory, and just give them hundred million or you know billions to OYO, billions to soft uh, billions to uh, tons of companies that they've given. We work. Uh, Uber and all, and they made no money anywhere, right? So, frankly, uh, more money actually makes you arrogant, makes you think that you can achieve anything. But reality is, uh, you cannot put nine mothers together and say produce a baby in a month. <laughs> and also, you cannot even say that let's put nine mothers together and put nine babies in a month because you know nine mothers together will also fight. So it will not be a uh, Good, good uh, maternity for the nine kids or the nine mothers either. So, frankly, none of those things work. Great. Uh, this is the problem with having too much money. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, time for the audience questions, and uh, I've clubbed uh, questions from Rishabh and Soumya, uh, who are essentially asking about the aftermath of a startup failure. So, how to manage layoffs and the legal behind startup failures, and any financial uh, liability. For the founding team that may occur. Sorry, repeat the question. I didn't hear you for the part. Kindly repeat it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's about the aftermath of the startup failure, mm. which is how to manage mm. the payoffs and the legal behind startup failures and any financial liability for the founding team. Okay. So, firstly, uh, number one, layoffs. So, when you shut down, I think there are processes in which you shut down. You have to uh, file for, like, if you are in US, you have to file for bankruptcy. There are equivalent, more complicated processes in India, which your CA or CS or lawyer can advise you on. You need to follow the process. And actually, I think as long as you are, one thing is that even if you lose and you go down and your company shuts down, do it with integrity still. Don't try to blame it on others. Be very honest with your team. Communicate with them. Look, this is what's going on. It's not working. And these are the reasons you may start looking around and let me help you if I can, etc. So be honest and helpful to them as far as you can. Secondly, in terms of layoffs, I think uh, you must have an employee contract with every person in your team. So follow the contract. If it says you have to pay three months salary in case of or two months notice period or something, do that. If you can't do that, then you must file for bankruptcy. Your company has to take care of it. Uh, your liabilities, you have to see depending on what you've signed in the contract and uh, what the employees are asking. You manage your layoffs with integrity, with honesty, tell your team. Most of them are likely to be reasonable. Handful might not be. Those people, you just force them on the contract and put them under the contract. Okay, so fire them as per the contract. Um, legally, there is no other liability as such on you unless you've given personal guarantees anywhere. So for example, Vijay Malia had taken loans from the bank. His companies did not do well. That's not a concern, but concern is that on the loans while he took, he gave a personal guarantee that I will pay you if my companies don't do well. That's why he's stuck. That's why he has to pay back the six or eight thousand crore or whatever amount is due. So if you, have, you don't give personal guarantees because there is no guarantee in a startup world or anywhere else in the world anyways. So avoid any legal obligations like that. But if you have a legal obligation for it, look into all your contracts, must do everything on contract. Your employees should have a contract which should protect the company first and then be reasonable to the employee. Your client contracts, you need to look at that there is nothing you're writing that for years you will provide the service irrespective of your company continuing or not. There are clauses by which you can cover this that in case something happens to the company, you may not be able to provide the service, etc. There is no legal liability. There are indemnification clauses you can add where you are uh, completely harmless in case anything happens. So nobody can come after you. Make sure you do that. So there are ways to cover the legal liabilities. Don't be just stupid and give guarantees in arrogance. You'd never do that. Lastly, financial ones are if you have taken investor money that is likely to be equity or a loan or a debt, convertible debt, those are actually you can write off. I mean, it's not your responsibility. If, you, if your company shut down, the idea didn't work, it didn't work. The investors lose the money. But of course, if you have some money left, and your company is unable to continue and you want to quit a bit sooner than you have run out of money, then consider returning the money to the investors as much as you can. And there are processes in which you do that. So you have to redeem their shares or buy back their shares at lower value, etc. Uh, otherwise, there are financial obligations. If you have taken any loans, that's on you, depending on whom you have taken them from. 
if you have taken them from a bank under a startup scheme means you have given no collateral then it's just a non performing asset for them there is not much liability for you but if you are not this smart and you have taken a loan by putting your parents house or your own house on uh, under mortgage or under uh, given that as collateral then obviously you will have to pay back that money so these are the kind of financial obligations you may have to so be careful do not have do not put in any assets or too many assets that you can't afford to lose uh for taking money and loans okay uh, investor money it's gone investors lose it this is a definition of the equity they are shareholders in your business it does well they make they make lot of money it doesn't do well they lose all the money this is how it works excellent so these are some of the ways you can think about layoffs legal and financial obligation excellent that's plethora of information um, and while that sinks in mahesh has a question when you go after scaling so many things go sideways do we really need to scale always so very very interesting and good question uh, most of the companies scale and get screwed i'll give you an example and i'll give you some examples i'm not sure uh, let me take one so how many uh, any of you ever went to a restaurant in chandigarh called flamboa flamboa was a restaurant in sector 8 then they opened in 35 excellent place classic a classic trap everyone or most businesses i know are not meant to scale or they lose their quality when they scale and they start losing out and they lose everything flamboa was one of the most excellent restaurants of chandigarh i used to love it the first restaurant did exceptionally well i think it was in sector 7 they opened a second one in 35 did reasonably well they opened 10 next restaurants in the next few months across punjab including chandigarh and punjab they all went bad all their in money they had made they started losing and they had taken some loans for the new ones and they started losing everything because they could not control the quality and all the restaurants were not producing equally so they shut down they shut down even the first two they had to because they had to pay back the money so certainly just a small example it's not truly a startup but yes arguably it is uh, same similar story may happen with chaios and some other restaurants who try to scale and who've been uh, darlings of indian startup story because they raised tons of money it may happen to them as well so many of these businesses actually act while scaling um do get do lose focus do lose quality do lose execution skills etc so scaling is not always needed it comes down to your ambitions if you are your ambitions if your ambition is that you want to be i don't know running a good small restaurant or cafe just sticking to that example or running a small tech business with 10 people or something you are well placed it's okay you don't need to be in forces you don't need to hire 200000 people you can be okay with 10 people too you may be happy with it it's a smaller team you are happier i have personally for example made a choice i will not go beyond 100 in my team we are only 100 if i don't know everyone's name if i don't know what everyone is doing i don't want to do it i prefer that i'm close to everyone and 100 people can do way more than 1000 or 100000 people today bigger you are bigger your liabilities are yeah. <laughs> in the current covid situation as big you are tougher it is for you for me 100 people team it's reasonably okay to manage but if i had 100000 people god help me so being small is good and look at companies like whatsapp or instagram they were only 10 or 20 people when they when they launched their products and services and they went and went on to get multi billion dollar valuations they were only 10 20 30 people for many businesses you don't need too many people small is better small is beautiful small is more less is more so uh, definitely you don't need to keep scaling up unless your business works only at scale or unless you are really confident that you will manage it well but otherwise many businesses do very well when they are small but they screw up when they scale up <coughs> excellent excellent kunal now ritika and prashant both had a question um is there a correlation in startup failure vis a vis the number of co-founders in a company and uh, what's the ideal size of the founding team um that should be suffice so again uh, unfortunately i don't have a simple mathematical quantifiable answer for you answer is it depends uh, co founder teams i think should be uh, in an ideal world okay two to four people two is good because you are at least two co founders you should be able to trust each other that's a number one requirement you should have complementary diverse skills you should not be both with same skill it doesn't help beyond the point so for example if you are good at tech then bring somebody for marketing if you are good at marketing bring somebody for operations etc so bring complementary skills uh, more than four is a crowd less than two doesn't work generally speaking okay 
but i'm not saying that there cannot be five co-founders who do very well infosys had i think tons of co-founders they gave they because they could not pay salaries initially they made everyone a co-founder the first 10 people were co-founders i think and all of them later fought on because they could not get the ceo title some left um but anyways i think 2 to 4 is a good number uh actually no it's not that you will, if you have three you will always succeed or you have higher probability of succeeding it's not that uh it comes down to millions of other factors a lot of stars need to be aligned for your startup to succeed uh but uh, i think 2 to 4 is a generally good number and uh, uh i think having diverse set of skills helps having people you can trust or who are in full of integrity and uh, who are reasonable you know they are not too strong minded that if you don't do what they say they will leave so you don't want such strong polarizing personalities you just want reasonable good people and uh, preferably people with diverse skills excellent uh, looks like vijay babu is a bit discouraged after hearing all this uh, discussion now he's asking what's positive about startup <laughs> would you want to take it up uh yeah i mean um, i think uh, um what's positive about a startup is the following let me give a brilliant examples all of you listen in and uh, when he try to tweet this part later yes startups lead to progress even if they fail let me explain how take an example 2003 somebody started a company a car company which was electric the person could not make this work the co-founders could not make this work and grow and scale 3 4 years later they were looking to shut down or uh, you know just end it but somebody else came in and said i believe in the idea i'll take it forward that was elon musk taking over tesla elon musk did not start tesla somebody else did elon took it over because he was one of the early investors the guys were from silicon valley elon was just one of the investors and in 2007 or so they took he took it on and said you know what i'll take it forward i have the money i recently got some exit and uh, i have uh, the willingness to do it and i believe in the idea that the world should have cleaner energy 2020 if covid 19 did not happen was the first year in which every single car company in the world was launching an electric version every single one of them not excluding even including ferraris and porsches and um uh, bmws and audis of the world to launch it within india as well every company is coming with electric and by 2025 hoping assuming we can recover quickly from covid 19 uh, crisis next year onwards uh by 2025 i i bet most of the car companies will go electric this would not have happened had somebody not started it in 2003 even chosen to shut down in 2006 and elon had not taken it forward startups lead to progress failures lead to progress edison most of the inventions that have happened in the past they did not happen overnight they failed many times before but they kept on going so failures lead to progress too this is a great thing about startup this is why i love startups you should all love startups you may or may not be best placed to do it but others would and that would lead to progress and humanity needs progress evolution in the right direction this is one positive thing i want you to take away we would not have cleaner energy across the globe by 2025 all cars would not have gone electric had somebody not started tesla and given it up to elon later to drive on that dream excellent um now i'll i'll just read out one last question before uh, we jump on to speak about some more important things rupinder um, had a question should a startup idea be pursued if you've been a witness to the problem statement but you don't have the direct subject knowledge um so yes and no take an example let's say Uh, just taking an example, and this is probably the easiest and the generic one, but I think we have time for that only. Uh, say you are a technologist, you know how to develop softwares, but you have no idea about healthcare. You have no idea about manufacturing. You have no idea about e-commerce deliveries, or you have no idea about, let's say, banking. But you can build technology for any of them, even if you don't know understand understand those industries. So today, for example, if you are a technologist, essentially all you know. or reasonably one of some of the things you know is how to build a software which can take in information process information produce information right that's what you do as a technologist you take data and manage it you can do it for a healthcare telemedicine example where you remotely connect with a doctor you take the video data streaming 
you convert it into some uh, encrypted data send it over the sockets on the internet and other side opens it and the client server application works or peer to peer data transfer application works you don't need to know what doctor says on it you don't need to be a doctor to be able to cure covid or uh, you know be able to run a zoom kind of a company right so frankly in many examples it's okay if you don't know the subject matter expertise it's actually better that you don't because the moment you do or the people who do do not come up with the disruptions Elon Musk, had he been working for Toyota or General Motors, he would not have built Tesla. He would have felt that yeah, we have great cars. Like um, like Ford said, if I'd asked people what they wanted in my business, they would have said yeah, they want faster horses, or they want faster cars. Nothing else. They would not have dreamed of airplanes, or the horses would not have dreamed of uh, uh, people use a drive riding horses would not have dreamed of the cars. So disruptions come from outside. It's a positive thing that you don't know. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, says it's good as long as you know what you don't know. You can learn it, right? But don't get biased. Do not take expert opinions in the space, because many experts they claim to be experts of the field, but they never have a perspective. They will never bring the perspective people from outside would. Ola cabs or Uber guy never drove a cab, but they had the idea and the vision of the transportation market, and they disrupted it with great technologies and many other things, right? So that's what I would say. You don't need to know about everything. And on the subject matter or the domain you are getting in, it's okay. You can learn, and but have your own conviction and vision that these things can change, and you probably will see it better than the people in it itself because they never see it coming. Kodak guys never saw the digital photo thing coming. They never took it seriously, hence they failed. Right? Apple uh, when they started digital cameras, never mobile cameras. Guys were not the ones who were doing Kodak or Nikon kind of things. Right? Uh, One other thing I want to say before Vineet gets to uh, say something, I think Vineet, if it's okay, yeah. you know, guys, feel free to tweet this or put this on LinkedIn, uh, Chandigarh Angels. I'll copy the social media handles, and if you want to reach out to us, to me or to Vineet or any of us, please reach out. Uh, our details would be given here. Feel free to get uh, advice. Otherwise, if you have any specific questions to your things, do connect and do stay connected. And uh, we at Can have come up with something interesting. I'll let Vinit talk about that now. Sure. sure. Uh, so Vinit, I think you want to move to the last announcement, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so guys, uh, before making that announcement, just uh, saying it for the benefit of everybody here. Uh, in case you've missed our previous, um, uh, you know, start a master classes. Here is a link of the playlist on YouTube. You can go through each one of those videos and get the insights from all the initial talks we've had. And even this video, this audio recording, whatever we have, will also go live on uh, YouTube in some time. Uh, that'll be uploaded on YouTube. Now, the interesting part that Kunal uh, was speaking about is um, is an accelerator program that we have come up with. It's a virtual accelerator, and uh, the reason behind coming up with this idea was there were so many early stage entrepreneurs approaching us who wanted us to handhold them and guide them. you know from the beginning of their journeys and so you know that structured mentoring program was not really effective the way we wanted it to be so we have come up with a very structured 6 weeks of virtual acceleration program uh, and i'm going to share that link here uh, in the chat so if you are an early stage entrepreneur you've already launched your product or you're thinking about launching that product you're in the initial research stages you figure out what your idea is or you're about to do that then you know you should apply to be accelerated under this program so we have a selection committee which will be working on to select only a few which will make the best sense for the program um and uh, for the cohort one we have decided will will go with 9 to 10 teams um you know and teams could have two entrepreneurs each up to two entrepreneurs each um and they'll be accelerated in a very structured way over next 6 weeks so would suggest you to go through this link chandigarhangelsnetwork.com/accelerate and uh, if you don't fit in if you are not really eligible um and if you don't have the relevant idea with which you want to apply at least help us reach out to the relevant people in your network whom you think would be the best fit for this program so thank you very much everybody Thanks a lot for your time on this Saturday. We really hope you enjoyed this discussion, and thank you so much, Kunal. You've always been so insightful. There is always so much to take away. Um, we are really grateful that you spared your time.
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Bye.